far ahead uh, and you gained a lot, a lot of knowledge already, but uh, also be a little bit hesitant to use it in your production uh, uh, environments. So identity tips, and I always want to start with the, the first one, and Microsoft 365 is mainly cloud we are talking about. And <clears throat> after the SolarWinds attack, Microsoft um, uh, wrote a good blog about their security recommendations uh, for the, the cloud admin accounts. And basically what it comes down to is to make sure to isolate the, those accounts from your on-premises environment. Because if your on-premises environment is breached, like what happened in the SolarWinds uh, attack, um, the, the, the accounts can be used to get access to your crown jewels in the, in the cloud. And that's something you don't want to have. So basically there are some guidelines Microsoft uh, released in the blog, which is um, uh, down below in the, in the, uh, in the screen, <clears throat> but uh, disable federation trust for your, um, your, uh, uh, admin accounts for your SharePoint admin, for your global admin. Don't synchronize them from on-premises environment to the cloud, but completely maintain them in uh, in the cloud. <clears throat> and always use MFA, of course. But there are certain scenarios and companies that are not uh, um, allowed to synchronize or to, to maintain um, uh, the accounts fully in the cloud, or maybe not uh, allowed to to authenticate towards the cloud, so they need to have a federation trust with their on-premises environment. So um, always, also when uh, when you have accounts like this or environments like this that are really regulated, um, try to. Um, uh, higher the security level of those accounts. And one way of doing that is by introducing privileged identity management. And by privilege, using privileged identity management, you can use just regular accounts. Of course, uh, you need, I would always use uh, a special uh, operator or admin account uh, to do your admin tasks. I won't be using my own account because when my own account get breached, then you don't want to uh, have your elevated permissions on that account. So um, a normal user, special user, um, can request a specific role. And <clears throat> as part of the request, the user needs to maybe uh, provide a, a service ID or a service number um about a, a task he a description uh, about the task he needs to to perform a uh, description why he wants to have access so he will get access and do his job for x number of time of uh, a special period and then after he's done the permissions are revoked again and it's back to a normal user so basically you don't have still admin accounts in your environment, which to me would be the perfect solution. I will show you how this, this works, at least from the, uh, from the activation part uh, in, the, in the short demo later on. Also, um, make sure that you have your uh, governance around Azure AD groups uh, in place. And because by using groups and uh, Microsoft 365 groups, um, it always is related to data. And you don't want to have still teams with data uh, being unmanaged uh, and being in your environment without being used. Uh, or you don't want to have um, uh, still access of users to groups and its data because maybe the user already shifted from department one to department two and he doesn't need to have access anymore. And, and if you have a good identity and management system, uh, then uh, 
a move from department one to department two should be implemented in a system like that. But uh, with the cloud, it's a little bit more difficult. So uh, make sure that, or make sure, have a look at what the, uh, the basic or the standard Azure AD options can do for you. Uh, for instance, by um, configuring an expiration uh, period for a group and that if the group needs to be renewed, that there needs to be an action from the group owner instead of that uh, a group uh, of a three, a Microsoft 365 group will stay there for ever with all the data and so on. Uh, of, of course, uh, configure things around group naming so that you know what kind of groups there are. And um, you might want to introduce also access reviews. So if somebody has access to a group for 90 days and it didn't use it for the last 30 days that uh, somebody needs to uh, have a look at if the user still needs access or maybe the user needs to uh, manually uh, extend the access. So let's have a look at uh, the options in uh, in Azure AD. And <clears throat> let's do this from uh, the AD portal. And here you will see that uh, my admin account doesn't have any permissions. So I need to first uh, request my uh, permissions and I'm able to do that via the identity governance and then uh, go to privilege identity management and look up the roles I'm entitled to. So in this case and also for further demos I want to have the global administrator role and then I need to uh, first have some uh, provide some uh, additional verification in this case, it's uh, MFA. So I get the MFA prompt on my mobile phone. I need to approve it and then, of course, show my face. Otherwise, it won't go through. And then I'm able to configure the amount of time I, want, I need for, in this case, this session. And to make it a little bit more, let's just choose one hour. If I needed access tomorrow, then I can also pre-schedule the uh, assignment of the group uh, in advance. So uh, I need to provide a reason. And then I need to activate my role. And in this case, uh, there's no need for extra approval, but for a global admin role, you can add, for instance, also an extra approval step that your manager or maybe the CISO needs to first approve that I'm able or I'm allowed to become a uh, uh, global admin for uh, the next two hours. So the validation of my activation, activation is now successful and then uh, the portal will be refreshed and I will, uh, will have access. So still in the uh, in the Azure AD portal, we should have access now and uh, perform at least the demos for today. So if I go to groups, here we have the uh, the group expiration options. And if you haven't looked at this, you yeah you will find it under the groups in the Azure AD. So what you can do is to, for instance, create a default lifetime of uh, of a group in in days like uh, 180 or one year or just a, a custom uh, custom number of days uh, uh, as long as it's greater than 30. So in this case, just let's use 60. And then <clears throat> uh, you need to provide a contact, email contact for the groups that don't have an owner configured. So by default, it will be using the, the, the owners of the, the groups. Uh, to extend um, the 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 lifetime of the group, so in this case, at, let's use this one, and then I'm able to configure this for all Microsoft 365 groups 
or just uh, a limited group of uh, of uh, of groups. So in this case, I don't have any uh, Microsoft 365 groups available. Uh, but if I choose all, then all the groups, uh, basically, or all the teams that are created, uh, they are also based on Microsoft 365 groups. Then all the groups that are created have a default lifetime of 60. So uh, after um, uh, when it comes closed and uh, 30 days before the expiration, the, the group owners or uh, myself get an email to extend the lifetime of the group. For the naming policy, it is easy to at least um, make, make sure that you have uh, uh, a default way of creating the, the groups. So you can configure a prefix or a postfix or suffix uh, to the groups. Um, <clears throat> you can do that based on attributes. So if you um, configure an office or whatsoever uh, of the user of um, the, uh, if the user has uh, uh, configured an office, then um, you can use the attribute or you can just use custom uh, uh, parameters uh, just by adding a string and then uh, choose something like uh, or, or something like Teams. You can also add a CSV with block words that uh, you don't want to have uh, that they are not allowed to be used in, in the group naming. So that's uh, can be done also from here. So let's discard this. And last but not least, you can configure access reviews. And access reviews is, I think, it's a uh, uh, EMS or a E5 license, uh, but it can help you a lot um, when when having uh, or to reduce the stale access to to data in uh, by users that had uh, they they've got uh, permissions to a share one day and nobody bothered to revoke uh, permissions it is basically the same uh, 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 on premises that as it is in in uh, in um, in the cloud world, uh, if somebody gets access to a team uh, for a small part of a project and after then he moves on to a different project, but uh, permissions are still valid. So you can create access reviews by, uh, on a global level, but you can also, uh, for instance, look up a group. And I won't use the uh, break the glass group, but uh, let's just create or just use any uh, other one and then create an access review for this group and then uh, for all users or maybe only for guests so if you invite guests to your team um, it needs to be renewed every once in a while so uh, the, like I said the group owners can review it you can pick and choose uh, users um, that uh, are allowed to review or managers or whatsoever. Um, so if we use group owners and if the group owner doesn't um, uh, review or doesn't uh, approve it or doesn't react, then you can uh, use a fallback reviewer and <clears throat> uh, you can say, okay, on a monthly basis, um, group access to this group needs to be reviewed. Um, if it's not reviewed within three days or not approved within three days, then uh, uh, basically uh, we can say, OK, then uh, access is, is being revoked or um, take the recommended approach and that's basically if a user doesn't didn't use the group for 30 days, then Microsoft can say, OK, based on the usage of the group, maybe it's better to remove the user from from the group. So this will keep your groups 
clean as possible, uh, as clean as possible, and you don't have really, uh, or you don't, yeah, you don't have a lot of users that have access to groups they they of to date that they don't use anymore. Uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the the requirements if you uh, uh, moving towards the cloud and managing groups and teams uh, in the cloud. So let's move on to conditional access. Um, first one, and this is a preview feature. And I see a lot of customers struggling with uh, with conditional access and designing it uh, uh, can be can be challenging for customers because uh, often the customers think, okay, I need to block all and then put holes in my firewall. And it's the old way of thinking, uh, but conditional access is a little bit different. Uh, by default, everything is open and you need to create conditions, certain conditions and, uh, uh, to, to allow access. Uh, so, um, for instance, if a user comes from a Windows device, which is fully managed by Microsoft Endpoint Manager and compliant, then it's allowed to access my data. If it's not compliant, you don't have access. If the device is not managed, you don't have access. So that's a little bit thinking another way around. So <clears throat> Microsoft uh, created uh, the, the, the CA templates, which can help you uh, create at least the baseline of, uh, of the conditional access uh, uh, rules, which can help you enormously if you are struggling a little bit in, in how to uh, configure this. We will have a short look at it uh, in a couple of uh, minutes. Um, <clears throat> if you are managing mobile devices and or, uh, at least you are allowing mobile devices to access your environment, then <clears throat> you can use app protection to secure the the apps that are being used uh, by by app protection policies and um, allow users to access the, the the service or to 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 access your data without being enrolled for instance without being completely managed but uh, as a company you only manage the apps and i've implemented it a lot of customers and uh, yeah, users are really happy because they often bring their own device. And in the past, they got um, uh, they needed to install MDM, configure MDM, and then a lot of restrictions were put on the device, their own device, and uh, it was hard to to do uh, the normal things you would do on your phone, and it was also hard to to get your access to your work email. So a lot of uh, uh, users removed uh, the MDM again and started forwarding emails to their private email address. And that's uh, not something you want. So a lot of companies uh, introduced uh, app protection policies uh, without enrollment, but um, it was always hard to to see if the apps are were really uh, uh, protected. And Below in the screen, you see a couple of uh, donut charts um, <clears throat> and the red, uh, uh, this part um, says that the app is not protected and you don't want to have unprotected app, uh, uh, apps that are being used to access your, uh, your environment, uh, your data. Um, so Microsoft tried to fix that, uh, or at least fix that uh, in, in uh, the conditional access policy. Whereas in the, in, the, uh, in the beginning, there was only the check if a approved client app was being used. Nowadays, we can check if the app is actually reported as protected. So how does this uh, work? Um, here you see the, uh, the two controls in, in uh, conditional access. And the first one is there already for a long time. And basically what is being done when the user checks, uh, logs into Azure AD, 
uh, via the app, of course, the Azure AD uh, SDS will check if the app that is being used, if it's uh, on the approved app list uh, of Microsoft. If so, then uh, we get an access token and then the user is uh, allowed to, to of the app is allowed to uh, contact the service and download, for instance, uh, the mail in Outlook. Like I said, there wasn't any check if the app was really uh, protected or not. So if an Intune license was not in place, then the user wouldn't have received the uh, app protection policy. <clears throat> so what is being added now is that we can check if the app is protected. So uh, again, same, um, the user logs into Azure AD and then um, the Azure AD SDS checks in Intune if the app that is being used is reported as protected uh, in the service. If so, then of course we get access again and we are able to uh, to access uh, uh, Exchange Online in this case. So if we go a little bit back, um, <clears throat> the most important thing in Intune when using Microsoft Endpoint Manager slash Intune is that um, if a user doesn't have an Intune license, it will never receive an Intune policy or will never be able to enroll a device in Intune. Um, when using Windows or uh, using MDM, and the user gets a, a prompt for, oh, you're not allowed to log off uh, to enroll your device, so you won't get access. When using apps, um, the apps won't be protected by the application uh, uh, protection policy, but they still will have access to to the service uh, when only using this option. So it's good to to make sure that at least your your app protection uh, protection policy targeting is is okay, but also that your license uh, uh, provisioning is uh, is okay. Um, when using conditional access, um, nowadays, and I think it's TA indeed, uh, you can use conditional access filter to, filters to uh, uh, make a more granular way of applying conditional access filters. So basically, um, <clears throat> based on maybe uh, the trust type of a device or operating system version, you can apply a more restrictive policy than uh, uh, if you have the latest and greatest up-to-date uh, 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 policy. So based on a lot of uh, parameters, uh, you can create more, uh, more granular uh, conditional access policies, which is, uh, I think, a good thing. So let's uh, have a quick look at uh, conditional access. Also in uh, located in Azure AD. So under security, we have the uh, conditional access uh, policies, which will be listed momentarily. So if you go to conditional access, we see that I have in my demo tenant uh, a lot of uh, recreated uh, policies already. But if we look under new policy and uh, here under uh, create po new policy templates, we have the option to create policies from uh, templates. So if we choose this option, you will see that uh, I can create policies uh, based on the identity category or a device category. So let's first choose uh, identities. Basically, what we are here see here is all the uh, templates that are uh, related to identity, uh, uh, for instance, to authentication. Uh, uh, for instance, block legacy authentication. If you don't have this blocked already in your environment, make sure you do because you don't want to have your tenant still exposed for uh, uh, legacy authentication if Microsoft didn't already uh, 
uh, disable everything. Uh, but by just clicking this one, uh, there's a default naming uh, convention already in place. And you see what it's being created. Uh, it's configured as report only. So report only allows you to test this um, uh, in your environment. And based on the sign-in logs, you can see, okay, um, this policy will not uh, impact all my users uh, in a bad way, but it will secure my environment. So when creating the policy, we will see a new policy created with CA00 and then in report only and it's uh, yeah evaluating your uh, your authentications uh, towards towards all cloud apps in this case so if we choose the uh, devices then you see more things around uh, compliance or uh, block unknown um, uh, devices, uh, not supported devices, and so on. Um, so it can help you uh, at least design your uh, conditional access structure. And here you see, if you click a few uh, policy summary, you can see up, up front what is going to be uh, configured. So make sure to uh, to have a look at this. Um, the, uh, the conditional access policy with the app protection. I have a short video. <clears throat> so um, let's uh, create this. So what we will do here is um, create a conditional access policy uh, for the uh, for the app protection without enrollment, and uh, we want to check basically uh, if the uh, if the app is uh, protected. So for Outlook or basically all the uh, Office 365 uh, cloud apps. We do this to all users always, of course, make sure that you uh, don't lock yourself out. In this case, um, we only use um, Office 365 uh, on iOS and Android because those policies are only available on iOS and Android. So this is uh, at least a good way um that of a good yeah way that we know that it's not locking myself and my uh, global admins out of my uh, environment uh, because uh, if you've seen the session of Kenneth for Sergsum earlier today conditional access can be really dangerous if you configure uh, it wrongly so in this case uh, we choose to require the approved client app together with the uh, require uh, app protection policy and then um, let's move on a little bit quicker so if you in, nowadays uh, the the require app protection policy supports a little bit more uh, um, uh, uh, applications and it's open for third parties, as you see. Uh, nine mail and multi line are included. And um, so we are going to check for the if the app protection uh, policy is in place. And now we will switch to uh, the mobile device and check if I can access uh, the Outlook uh, of uh, Exchange Online via the Outlook app. So here we see that we are not managed. We don't have a management profile in place. And we open Outlook. And there it is. And then add the right email address.
and the authenticator app will be used as the authentication broker to make sure that um, uh, yeah the permissions are uh, checked uh, in the service and here we see the I'll use zoom it a little bit if I'm allowed here we see that um, access is being denied because the app must be protected with an intune policy and in this case we have checked the, if if the app is protected or not and apparently it's not so um, we need to fix this in our environment and make sure that uh, yeah the users are allowed to access uh, the service so we quickly fast forward and go back to uh, to the Azure tenant or to the uh, endpoint manager admin center and look at our uh, app protection policies and for some reason I fully forgot to uh, assign the app protection policy to uh, to any group and um, by adding the right group now uh, we should be able to uh, to access uh, exchange online via Outlook. So if we pick the catch all EMS licenses group. Basically all this is a dynamic group with uh, all the users that have an Intune slash EMS license. So uh, this way you make sure that all the users that have a license that are also uh, are targeted with uh, the app protection policies. So if we now switch back to uh, to the Outlook client on my iOS device, we will uh, see that uh, uh, we will have access. So again, we sign in, and um, the authentication authenticator app is being used uh, again. And now you see that I'm allowed to move on and configure and uh, the Outlook app. And the device of the the Outlook app will be protected by app protection policies, which is what we want. So, in the last part, for the last uh, 15 minutes or so, I want to cover a little bit about mobile device management. And mobile device management. Uh, AKA model management, uh, because yeah, it's also a little bit uh, Windows 10 management or Windows 11 management. And for users or administrators that are uh, using Config Manager and want to use Tenant Attach, and it's being rebranded, by the way, to Cloud Attach, and, and want to have more visibility in, in the MEM admin console, uh, you can use. Um, Cloud Attach to to basically extend your uh, Config Manager environment towards uh, the MEM Admin Center, and uh, you don't need to enroll uh, anything. You only need to synchronize the information, and uh, you need to make sure that you uh, use the same account in your MEM Admin Center that has permissions in in Config Manager. So uh, the steps, uh, configure uh, code management, you upload the devices to the MEM admin center. You need to enable that and make sure that, uh, yeah, you have the right permissions, which is a little bit a contradiction, which I stated at the first slides is to make sure that your cloud admins are cloud only accounts. And this is one of the scenarios which will break if you want to use uh, tenant attached because a cloud only account cannot be uh, given permissions in, in Config Manager. So make sure, be aware of that. <clears throat> um, when, when working with, with Microsoft Endpoint Manager and, and managing devices, um, you can create filters or you can create uh, uh, policies and it's a, often a best practice to configure or to deploy your policies and applications and and res device restrictions to to groups of users and to make sure that uh, on on whatever device they are logging in 
to that they are always uh, uh, receiving the same policies and the same uh, 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 restrictions so that they are always secure. Um, this can be challenging because if you, um, for instance, uh, with the shipment of, of Windows 11, we all the devices were were shipped with a private Teams client, and the 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 day that um, Windows 11 was shipped, a lot of blocks uh, popped up in the community to remove this uh, this personal uh, Teams client uh, from uh, the device because uh, enterprise uh, device with the personal Teams client, a lot of companies don't want to have that. Um, if you assign this to uh, to a group of users, then it will would also be applied to a Windows 10 device and it will issue a, an error because that client is not there. Uh, so with filters, you can say, OK, I target this to a group of users, but only apply this policy or this profile or this application to um, to the results based on the filter. So if I say, OK, this policy is only of include only the Windows 11 uh, devices, then it will only be applied to Windows 11 and not to Windows 10. So this is a great addition. It's still a preview and they're still working hard to make more features available. So make sure to have a look at this uh, uh, when you, uh, yeah, uh, manage your uh, devices in uh, Endpoint Manager. Device diagnostics uh, in Windows 10 slash 11. Uh, managing devices from the cloud and when you come from an on-premises world like Config Manager. It, with Config Manager, we were used to having hundreds of log files we could dive into to troubleshoot a deployment or to troubleshoot uh, connectivity issues of, of a Windows device. But while managing those devices from the cloud, the, the ways of troubleshooting uh, went, went almost back to, to zero. Uh, there weren't that much options. Um, with this preview feature, you can collect um, uh, a lot of log files uh, from a remote device to yeah to your uh, uh, device to analyze uh, uh, at least what's going wrong on the device. So why is a, a policy not applied? Why doesn't it receive application X? Why uh, is the uh, Windows update not working? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So. Finally, we we have, we have some more tools to to manage uh, Windows uh, yeah, via Microsoft Endpoint Manager, which is uh, which is a great addition if you ask me. And last but not least, and that's um, when managing and moving away of moving more and more to the zero trust uh, infrastructure that we don't have access to corporate LAN. Um, uh, all the time, then we also need to maybe remotely uh, of allow access to internal resources, which are still uh, within the boundaries of uh, of our company and with uh, uh, of our data center. So there are a couple of ways of doing this, and one way <clears throat> within Microsoft Endpoint Manager is by using Microsoft Tunnel, and this is uh, currently only for iOS and Android available, but basically what happens, what, what it allows us is by installing uh, a Docker uh, image uh, or yeah, Docker instance uh, on Linux, it will uh, create um, a tunnel service which we can publish um, to, the, uh, to the outside world, which we can use to connect our devices to and to access our corporate one. So uh, if I click through, then um, and what basically happens is that um, um, 
the user logs in on the device, connects to the published uh, Docker instance, which is connected to the internet and the corporate LAN. That Docker image is fully managed by Endpoint Manager. And you can also configure it that it's fully updated and managed also by Microsoft. So uh, this is uh, a good way of uh, allowing access to, to your environment uh, without ne needing extra management uh, uh, of uh, uh, work. And of course, conditional access can um, in Azure AD can control access to, to or from what device you are using this. Another way, and which is already there for a long time, is by using um, Azure AD, uh, uh, the app proxy in Azure AD. So what basically happens is, and let's also click through uh, more quickly, is that um, you install an agent or an app proxy service, one or more, in your internal network or in your DMZ, and you configure this in Azure AD, and then the app, the, the agent connects to the app, uh, the app proxy service in Azure AD. And uh, over that tunnel, which is uh, created, we can access internal uh, resources. So internal resources are proxied over that outgoing connection. So the big uh, 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 differences between using Microsoft Tunnel and, and um, the Azure App Proxy is that the Azure App Proxy uh, doesn't, you don't need to open uh, ports from outside to inside. It can only be used for uh, HTTP or HTTPS ports. In uh, Microsoft Tunnel, you need to open ports to your uh, to your environment, and it can be used also for for uh, 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 legacy more other communication than, than HTTP and HTTPS. So let's use the last couple of minutes to at least show you a little bit uh, of, uh, of Microsoft Tunnel. <clears throat> and then also uh, the, uh, the end user experience. So if we um, I need to refresh this one to get the access token. So here you see that I have one uh, tunnel instance, and this is basically a virtual machine, uh, Ubuntu in this case. And I am not uh, an Ubuntu expert, but uh, the, the link is in the slide. Maya Sandu created a real good step-by-step, -step which uh, uh, allowed me to create uh, a Microsoft Tunnel service. Um, but you see the health state, state here. Um, you need to configure uh, configuration around uh, your environment. Uh, what's your IP uh, range your, that's being used for your uh, uh, clients that are being connected, your DNS suffix, your DNS, internal DNS service, uh, if you want to use split tunneling or whatsoever, you can uh, use this. Um, if you have multiple sites, you can create them. And of course, the servers, um, you can configure this to be uh, completely managed from, from, uh, um, from Intune or, or uh, that you of, yeah that you own of uh, manually op of up upgrade the service uh, at the site so it's configured on site level if you uh, uh, want to uh, upgrade this uh, uh, manually the um, the Azure AD app proxy is is fully in uh, uh, configured in Azure AD but let's use the last minute. last couple of minutes for connecting my iPad. And then uh, just quickly show that when using uh, Microsoft Tunnel, you see that uh, I'm using uh, 
just uh, local IP address and that the VPN uh, is uh, is being launched. And with um, the app protection of the uh, app proxy, um, you can use a public DNS name and then with conditional access, uh, uh, you are allowed access based on your, uh, uh, you see the redirect to login.microsoftonline.com. So uh, you can uh, have access based on the device you are using or not. And this is the, uh, the uh, uh, website uh, being published uh, via the, uh, the app proxy. So with that, uh, I want to thank you and uh, join the community. You're already a member of uh, this community. If you have questions, um, uh, use Reddit. Uh, Reddit is really active. Uh, we have our own community, uh, WP Workplace Ninjas. Uh, we have a summit, we have a user group. Uh, MMS is a great place to exchange data also. Uh, if there are any questions, Um, if anybody no. has any questions, they can raise their hand. We'll take them off mute or oh, yeah, we can do it in the chat. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, of course, uh, share your feedback. Uh, we learned from uh, feedback uh, by the session, but also, of course, the organizers uh, learn from, uh, from feedback. And uh, if you have more questions, uh, you're not willing to come mute, yeah, feel free to reach out and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks a lot. It was uh, very interesting stuff. It's a lot for only 50 minutes, but yeah. <laughs> I, I was, you did it. You pulled it yeah, off. I was, I was doubting to maybe move back to seven, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It's the session stayed at 10, so let's yeah. keep it at 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, a, a good. All right. Thank you very much. Dive into Pardon? things to do, yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Right. So I will grab a beer and. Uh, yes. Weekend. And have so. a good weekend. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. All right. Bye, everybody.